This is an abandoned city located on an island. In the 1970s, Japan was building their economy. One of the ways they did this was coal production, and lots of this happened on Hashima Island. The island was a great place. It had all the amenities you could imagine in a normal city, only everyone in it was a coal miner. 5,000 coal miners lived on this island east of Japanese mainland. But over the years as Japan modernized, petrol began beating coal, and this caused coal plants to shut down, meaning the island was abandoned. One day in the 1970s, all of the coal miners left on boats. Because the island was owned by the coal company, they didn't give them much notice. Because of this, all of these structures are still on this island. Today the Japanese government says you can't visit this island on your own, but rare guided tours of some portions of the island are done. But have no fear, Google have actually made a virtual tour of this abandoned island. This island also is rumoured to be haunted. That may sound crazy, but it has a pretty dark past before it was used as a coal mine. During World War II, it was used as a forced labour site. This is where prisoners of war would have to mine coal all day. This is not just one city. If you go to China, you'll find many mega cities. These are built to house millions of people, but the population is a big fat zero. These ghost cities are made of fancy villas, high-rise apartments, lakes, parks, and roads. The only thing missing is people. There's around 50 of these ghost cities in China, but construction of these continues. But why is this? Well, it's because of China's economy. It's no secret that they're the fastest growing economy in the world and they will soon kick the USA off the number one spot. However, their economy is driven by debt. This means local governments try and stimulate their economies by building more and more. They hope this will stimulate the property market, creating a housing bubble. It's said that China has around 70 million empty apartments. But you would not want to go to one of these ghost towns. For one, all of the architecture looks the same, so you may get lost and not be able to find your way out. Not only that, if anything bad happened to you, there's no one around to help. There are no citizens or police for miles around these cities. And because some are still in the process of being built, there's many dangerous construction apparatuses all over the place. abandoned island in New York. The 20 acre island is totally isolated. In the 1800s, it was a pandemic hospital to quarantine people with smallpox. But by the 1960s, it was totally abandoned. Today, trees and vegetation have taken over the island, and the city of New York has banned anyone from going onto it. These deserted buildings are the ruins of Riverside Hospital. Less than a century ago, it was an institution where a vast number of people suffering from quarantinable diseases were isolated from the public. There is a town in Brazil called Candido Godoy that has an abnormally high rate of twin births. The rate is a whopping 10% compared to 1% for the rest of Brazil. As you could imagine, it would be quite a strange experience to happen unknowingly across this town, and some might suddenly think they were transported into a horror movie. Clearly, some people came to a conclusion that they really were in a real-life horror movie because many have speculated that it was the work of evil Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele, who was known for doing vile experiments on twins and trying to make the perfect Aryan baby. However, one scientist decided it was time to actually find out what was going on and ran DNA tests on many of the women in the village, and he found something a bit more banal. Essentially, she discovered that the women who were having twins had a similar gene, and she also found that there was a high rate of inbreeding in the area between all the German immigrants. In other words, only a couple of people with the gene arrived in the village at first, but with a lot of inbreeding, it quickly spread among the future women of the village, creating a creepy town full of way too many twins. Several years ago, the Smurfs 3D came out to rather mediocre reviews. However, it did fairly well in terms of numbers, as the Smurfs have always had quite a dedicated fanbase. 
Knowing the popularity of Smurfs, Sony had decided to try for a publicity stunt and find a town that would allow their whole town to be painted blue for the movie. The tiny 221-person town of Juzcar in Spain accepted the offer with the knowledge that they would have it changed back free of charge afterwards. However, what the residents of Juzcar decided to do after it was over was keep their village blue. You see, what they found is that after their village turned blue for the movie, they went from 300 tourists in a year to 80,000, which was a huge boon to their economy. They now host Smurf-themed events and also point out that they are known for their mushrooms and fungi and that the Smurfs are as well, so the whole thing was a happy coincidence. For the residents of Juzcar being the Smurf village has given them a much brighter future than they ever imagined they would have as a city. of Langley on Whidbey Island, which is part of Washington State, has a very unique and adorable problem on their hands. It all started back in 2001 when a bunch of rabbits got loose from a fair. At first, nobody expected much to happen, but then the rabbits started breeding like, well, rabbits. Before long, the citizens had a very ridiculous problem on their hands, with the little critters running amok and happily eating from people's vegetable gardens. Part of the reason they were able to thrive so easily is because it was a small island without a lot of natural predators for the rabbits. While some are concerned about the growing problem with the rabbits now numbering in the thousands and that the number is likely to increase, most people are against the wholesale city-sanctioned slaughter of the rabbits. City officials don't want to spend their days hunting down rabbits by the bushel, and many of the citizens actually find them adorable and would prefer to exploit it at least a little bit for tourism. Still, the city is not entirely okay with the issue and is considered bringing in more natural predators to thin them out. Of course, as we all know, that doesn't always work so well and may only add more problems. Michael Reynolds is a man with a dream, and that dream is to create completely sustainable homes all over the world. And better yet, he's doing this using only junk. His creations he labels Earth ships, and he literally builds them using old cans, tires, and other junk he finds lying around. He is a former architect who decided that living needed to be more sustainable and started working on just one to start out. Since then, interest has blossomed all over the world, and in Taos, New Mexico alone, he has built a staggering 75 of his Earth ships. These structures are designed to use solar power, have their own food sources and sewage, and everything else is totally independent of anything else around them. Reynolds believes Earth ships are superior to modern architecture, as modern structures are often made with less care and rely on the city for everything. However, modern zoning has been his biggest problem as New Mexico fought him over whether he could have a city with buildings that didn't rely on each other or any main central source. Despite many hurdles, he continues to build them all over the world to help others live a simple and sustainable lifestyle. too powerful? Is it when they control too much of the market? Is it when they're a monopoly? Or is it when they have their very own city? Well, that's exactly what Henry Ford, the founder of Ford, tried to do. In the 1930s, Ford decided to make a city in Brazil. They wanted a way to make cheap rubber, and they decided that they would use the natural resources from the Amazonian jungle. Because no one lived in the jungle except tribes, they had to build their own city, which they named Fordlandia. The goal was to make super cheap rubber in Brazil. They would then ship all of this over to the United States where they would use it on their cars. But it turned out that Fordlandia was a famous example of blue sky thinking. Henry Ford had a poor understanding of the ecological challenges. It turns out it's not so simple to extract rubber from the Amazon jungle. Who would have thought it would be hard to set up a city in the world's most dangerous jungle? Well, Ford did not, and that's why this city was abandoned in 1934. Today, you can see the abandoned factory and water tower. You can also find a few of the houses they built for the workers. But most of these have decayed and become destroyed over time. 